Welcome to Unit 5. Um, this is about preferred upload formats for meta-analysis in R with Metaphor. I'm going to show you um, generic and preferred upload formats for correlations, standardized mean differences, and for binary studies. Um, you can always use generic input. So you can create your own effect size and uh, its variants and then upload those and the metaphor program will run those just fine. That's the default in uh, in metaphor. Um, and that's probably the best thing to do if you have lots of different effect size and you have to calculate things and um, sort of smush them all into the same effect size before you do the analysis. Um, or if you just can't get the information that you need in order to use one of the preferred formats. Um, but the program metaphor has a lot of options for correlations for mean differences and for binary data that are built in and that are controlled by software switches. So um, if you use the preferred format then you can uh, switch the uh, model pretty easily without having to do any calculations. Metaphor will do all that for you. So um, if you want to use these built-in features um, then uh, use the, if you can, use the kinds of formats that I'm going to describe for you next. Alright, for correlations, the preferred method you want to code is correlation coefficient r and the sample size n for each study. When you upload r and n, um, Metaphor will give you options for uh, transformations that you can use. So here's an example of that. Alright, so here we've got the authors and the year, and here's n, the sample size, and then we've got some moderators here, and here's r, the correlation. So when I upload this, uh, I can tell Metaphor to analyze here's n and here's, here's r. I've also computed the r to z transformation here and its variance here, but um, and I could analyze these as defaults, but if I analyze z, and V here, um, the program isn't going to translate these into R and uh, that sampling variance for me. But if I input N and R, it will actually compute these for me. So there's an advantage to um, inputting N and R. Um, if you are analyzing standardized mean difference, or a mean difference is not standardized for that matter, you should upload the mean, the standard deviation, and the sample size for each group. Um, so here you've got the study, the year, and here's the mean for the experimental group, the standard deviation for the experimental group, the number in the experimental group, now the mean for the control group, standard deviation for the control group, the number in the control group, and then whatever moderators you want. Lastly, for binary data, what you want to do is most studies in the medicine and related fields have binary um, outcomes, so lived, died, um, success, failure, events, non-events. So and you typically have two groups. You have a treatment group and a control group or a comparison group, so group one, group two. The treatment group, you have uh, the event. They, they had a heart attack. They didn't have a heart attack. Um, the, uh, they had, were readmitted to the hospital, they were not readmitted to the hospital, and A plus B equals the total number of people in the treatment group. Uh, in the control group, same thing for C and D, and those should add up to the total number of people. And you can input A, B, C, and D, or you could input A, N1, C, N2, or something like that, and the program can figure out the rest. So let's pretend that we have a bunch of studies that evaluated mindfulness training on insomnia. We have, um, for each study we have two groups. A and B got mindfulness training. C and D got the, con the control group. They got some alternate training or no training. And um, at the end of the study we see if people have uh, insomnia or not. And in uh, this study 40 people do not have insomnia but 50 people do. In the control group there's 45 and 45. So a plus B would be 90 for N1, and uh, C plus D would be 90 for N2. So that's uh, the um, preferred file formats that you want to use.